In this video, we're gonna take a look at Athlon's flagship LPVO scope. It's the Cronus 1-6 by 24. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm actually the second person on the Ultimate Reloader team to work with the Athlon Cronus 1-6 by 24. Guy actually took the lead when he put it on our Henry X Model 3030. So here at Ultimate Reloader, we already unboxed the scope. There's not a whole lot to show here. Uh, the scope itself, plus the instruction manual, plus uh, a cleaning cloth. Let me run through specs and features real quick. We're gonna talk about the reticle and then I'll walk you through my experience using the Cronus 1 to 6 by 24 with this Spectrum AR-15 from Stag. This is a part of their 50 Shades series. This is 50 Shades of FTE. They also have 50 Shades of Green and there's a gray model as well. Really, really cool ARs and as you'll see later in the video, they perform really well. Okay, so the Cronus one to six by 24 is a premium LPVO scope. The scope is made in Japan, uh, super high quality fit and finish. If you pick the scope up, you can feel it's just really well made and all of the details are spot on. MSRP on this is $1249.99. That's as of the recording of the video, that price is subject to change. And you can expect possibly to find street prices that are slightly lower. One power, to six power magnification. So this is gonna be great for close range plinking, close range hunting, and any kind of defensive scenarios. Worked great on the AR, also worked really great on the lever gun. It's got a 24 millimeter objective, 30 millimeter tube diameter, and an eye relief of 3.6 inches on the close end and four inches on the far end. The clicks are half MOA, which is perfect for an LPVO. It's got an illuminated reticle, second focal plane, and I appreciate that with this power range. When you have a 6x magnification difference, you know, the to have the reticle constant size, you can see it at all magnifications. That's a really great trade-off for constant holdovers versus the uh, visibility of the reticle. You know, there's, there's always trade-offs there. And for this power scope, I would definitely pick second focal plane. 10.4 inches long and 21.5 ounces weight. So some features that are worth noting with the Cronus 1 to 6 by 24, precision zero stop, built in, very easy to use. Uh, all you need is a coin to get the caps off. They're locking, which is great. You push them in, they won't turn. You pull them out and they turn, love that. Uh, it's got the UHD glass and I'll have to say, I'll expound on this a little bit later when I talk about shooting at 100 yards, extremely clear, really good stuff. And the illuminated reticle is going to be on on even numbers and off on odd numbers. And there's 11 different brightness levels. And that illuminated center dot worked really, really well in our testing. Okay, so let's talk about the reticle. The ATSR2, Second focal plane illuminated MOA reticle, that's kind of a bit of a mouthful, is a really good design for an LPVO. Uh, it's optimized for three gun competition. It's optimized for 223 uh, drop and wind ballistics. Uh, great for short to, to mid range for hunting. And it's got that 1.4 MOA center dot that is a good balance between visibility and precision. And so the way this reticle is designed is you've got your zero at 200 yards is how it's intended to be set up. And then for 223 or 556, you've got a 300 yard drop line, a 400 drop yard line, a 500 and a 600. And then the gaps on those horizontal lines correspond to five and 10 mile per hour wind values. So the gap on the far right, for instance, is gonna be for a 10 mile per hour wind. The one towards the center from that is five, zero in the center, and then five and 10 mile per hour wind holds on the other side as well. Overall, you know, we use this in a variety of situations. I don't have any complaints at all about this reticle. I think it's awesome. So one of the things that's unique to Ultimate Reloader is our optics test rig. We have a precision test rig that I designed and built that 
allows us to place an optic ahead of the camera and we can make precision movements of the camera down less than a thousandth of an inch. And so we do things like testing tracking, parallax, magnification, image distortion, and so on and so forth. And the first test that we did was our tracking test. And I'll have to say I was super impressed with the tracking on the scope. Up, down, left, and right. The one thing that I noted, the only value that was not dead on was when we dialed right, as the reticle is moving over to the left, it did not line up exactly with the line. It was very close, but not exact. Other than that, all of the values were absolutely dead on. So I'm not sure if we had a very slight camera alignment problem uh, along that windage axis or, or what the issue was. Uh, in terms of parallax, again, we were able to move the camera 50 thousandths to the right, center it back up 50 thousandths to the left, back center. And we did not get much difference in the elimination of the scope. Usually you'll get a dark ring on, on one side. And I think because of the fact that it's an LPVO and it has a little bit more forgiveness, it was nice and bright and consistent throughout those parallax adjustments. We also went through the magnification settings on the scope for one, 1 1.5, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And the magnification throw lever that's built into the scope, it's, it's got a screw cap there so that you could extend this. I don't really think that's necessary on the scope because it turns very nicely, very freely, not one of those stiff magnification rings that's just a pain to deal with. So when we looked at tracking, magnification, parallax, and image distortion, things looked really good. The final test was reticle alignment. So we take a precision level, we level the target, we level the camera, and we level the scope. All of them are using the same exact level, facing the same direction, and very carefully uh, oriented angularly so that everything is on the same plane. And this scope, the reticle, was absolutely dead horizontal uh, and dead vertical. You could see we dialed down a little bit, which moves the reticle up just to give a nice little gap between the horizontal line on the chart and the horizontal line on the reticle. And that gap was perfectly consistent all the way across. So very good results on the optics test rig. So manning the scope was really straightforward with an Athlon cantilever mount. Uh, tightened the cross bolts, got the scope level. We actually did this on the optics test rig and then torquing the screws in a cross pattern at, at 18 inch pounds each. And so the first order of business, as is always the case after you mount a scope, is to go and zero the rifle. So we started at 50 yards. Uh, I was not on paper with the first shot uh, because of how the scope was centered when, uh, when Guy went shooting. So uh, I did an aim at the top of the sheet, aim at the bottom of the sheet kind of deal and got on, on paper and then dialed dialed over to the shot from there and was centered at 50 in two shots, which was awesome. Uh, taking it to 100, uh, definitely on paper with the first shot and then some minor corrections and we were good to go with a, a good 100 yard zero. And this is where the surprise came in. The initial surprise was, whoa, with a six power scope, I can see my 22 caliber bullet holes on paper. I was amazed because that's not always the case. Now, maybe it had to do with the fact that we did not have horrible mirage at that moment. Uh, there was some, but not a whole lot. Uh, I was super impressed. I've never seen bullet holes, uh, especially 22 caliber bullet holes with an LPVO that clearly. Absolutely awesome. And then the challenge with the scope like this, which is not set up for precision shooting at long range, is how to shoot a tight group. And what I decided to do was to take the center dot and put it figure eight style right under the circle on the paper. So almost had like a figure eight sight orientation there. And I was surprised, you know, I'm spoiled with these 24 power, 36 power scopes, whatever, I like high magnification. I was actually surprised at how easy it was to aim accurately. And one of the skews of ammo that we had on hand was the Burger 73 grain 
223 factory ammunition, which has Lapua cases, it has burger bullets, right? This is some seriously good ammo. But keep in mind, we're shooting with a six power scope and we're shooting at 100 yards. Well, that did not sh stop me from shooting a very slightly under one MOA five shot group at 100 yards. I measured this, this is 1.022 inches. Uh, one MOA is 1.047, right? So we're just barely, barely under one MOA. And what I consider to be good with an AR with a good longer range optic on it is about one to one and a quarter MOA. So I was definitely doing better than I thought I could with a lower magnification scope. And that makes me rethink what I can do with this type of setup. Now these Stag ARs, these are some of the ARs that we featured at the Rock Chuck Olympics. Everyone loved them. They were 100% functioning. And it just so turns out they're highly accurate as well, which makes me smile for sure. So after I shot at 100 yards from the bench, I decided I would do a little bit of offhand shooting. And we have a target at, I think it's 110 yards. It's just a rock chuck. And so I did some standing shots and was able to get five shots in a row on steel. So I've got a target here at 110 yards. We're gonna see how well I can do offhand. <laughs> there we go, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> so, satisfied with my shooting at the range, well, I guess partially satisfied. It's so dry, the fire danger is so high and hazardous up there that we can't shoot any long range steel targets. We can only shoot steel targets that we could drive to and stamp out the flames with our feet within 10 seconds. I mean, this is just wildfire country very dry grass over all the hills. It's kind of a bummer that we can't shoot our long range targets there. Okay, so it was, a, it was a good range trip for what we could do at the ridge line, but I thought, hey, let's head down to the industrial yard and do some shooting down there. So we've got a variety of targets here and I back my magnification off to three power to see how I'm gonna like that. Nice. I'd say that works pretty good at three and might even work pretty good at two power. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty nice. Whatever you need for that balance of uh, precision with aiming and rapid target acquisition, but uh, really, really clear, really works well. And what I like about the industrial yard is the fact that we have targets at different distances uh, at different orientations, right? So it really gives you the ability to acquire a target, then acquire another target, maybe hit it a couple times, whatever that happens to be. It's kind of a good defensive training area, uh, prep area for some spontaneous hunting encounter type situations. And I really liked the scope, even at you know two to three power, it worked really, really good on those steel targets. And just a lot of fun, it reminded me of how fun it is to shoot AR-15s. So at the end of the day, this Athlon Chronos 1 to 6 by 24 did awesome on the Henry X model 3030. Guy absolutely loved the scope. I had a really good time with this Stag Spectrum 50 Shades of FDE rifle. Uh, it's a 223 Wild, by the way. Maybe that had a little bit to do with how well it shoots. I know I've shot off the bench with a tripod and a higher magnification scope and had even better results than that. This thing is, for an AR off the shelf, I, I would call it a tack driver. Love this rifle. You know, so the big question is, hey, what are we gonna put this on next? We've got multiple options. So if you have ideas for us, drop a comment. Uh, if you have this scope, uh, let us know what you're using it on and what you're shooting with it and how it's going for you. Drop that comment and we'll start a discussion in the comments section. 
That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you wanna learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.